Yes, morning. Morning, everybody. Um, thank you for not being part of the mass exodus that left the room <laughs> after last. I wasn't offended, but I kind of was offended. Um, thank you so much for starting the time. I appreciate you, Kenny. Um, I'm going to speak to my therapist about that later. Um, but no, thank you, everybody, for taking the time out to listen to, to Helen and I. Um, this is Helen. Helen, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm head of marketing at Shelter. Yeah, anything else about you? Helen's, go <laughs> Helen, Helen's going to Vietnam and Thailand. She hasn't planned a trip. Helen's also moving back to the north and hasn't planned where she's moving. And we've been discussing it this morning. It's causing me a lot of anxiety. But I feel fine about it. And I was just sitting next to someone who's from Vietnam giving me great tips about it. So. But I don't feel I fine. I feel good. That's so, no, 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 fine. Um, and I'm Jay Richards, one of the co founders at Imagine Insights. So we enable our clients like Apple, Amazon, Google, so on and so on, to crowdsource qualitative insight from Gen Z within 72 hours. As you can tell, I've done that a couple of times. Um, so we're here to talk today about, um, about Shelter. So Shelter have been doing some amazing things with regards to activism and, and campaigning for the last 50 years. Um, and I was going to say Helen's been here the entire time because <laughs> Helen would have a great skincare regime if she had it. But um, we're going to deep dive into some of the, um, we're going to start from a macro perspective and then we're going to go lower and lower into really what Shelter are doing in the day to day. So Helen, my first question to you is starting at the top. We've only got 15 minutes, so we're going to be super, super quick. So you can see me speeding up through these. You've been at Shelter for two years, not 50. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to in that period of time and uh, what Shelter's marketing efforts are currently at the moment? Yeah, uh, I think the answer is a lot. <laughs> We've been up to a lot of things and I think it's important to contextualise it as well because a lot of people that don't work in charities assume that the job of the marketing team is to just bring in donations, which is a part of what we do. But we also do a lot of other stuff as well. It's about making sure uh, our clients know how and when to access our services. It's about campaigning the government to create long-term change that will ultimately end homelessness. It's about uh, marketing for our retail stores online and also the physical stores as well. So there's a lot of that involved. And in terms of like projects recently, we have a, a big partnership with IKEA and we recently had a, an installation in the IKEA store of people were expecting to see an IKEA room and instead they saw what it looks like to live in temporary accommodation based on what our clients are living in. And that I think was a really effective thing. We've also done a great campaign, which I'm sure we'll get into, uh, which we worked on together, which was the cost of living hacks. And that was looking at in a, a, a really serious issue, but in a lighthearted way. And similarly, another thing that we did was only choice lettings, where we created a fake letting agent with real stories of uh, what renters were experiencing mm. in order to kind of campaign for um, reform for renters. So yeah, lots of stuff. It's a really exciting time to be at Shelter. Um, there's a lot going on. You're making me feel lazy. <laughs> Helen's just like reeling off all these things that I probably should be helping with as well. But um, I think that's great. One thing I love, I, I'm, this isn't in my notes, so I'm kind of just doing whatever I want. Sure. But <laughs> the, the interesting thing I'm hearing with what you're saying is the, I love that you call your, um, I was going to say the folks in your community, but not, but the folks that you're helping, you're calling them clients. Yeah. That's so interesting. Why do you, why do you call them clients? I've never, I've never heard that before. Well, they are our clients. We're here. We work alongside our clients, people that use our services. Um, it's a really important aspect of shelter that we're actually like working together and we're not just providing a mm. solution to them because, mm. um, obviously like it's a joint thing and yeah. it's about um, also a lot of our clients then go on to become activists and campaigners with yeah. us yeah. we plan a lot of our policy with people with lived experience so I think that's really important part of of shelter and who we yeah. are I love I just love the way you phrase that clients it's such a beautiful way of actually saying it. I think it's great okay on to my second question um, Obviously, you had a brilliant cost of living hack, um, hacks campaign. I'm not saying it's because we were involved that it was amazing, but <laughs> it was really great. And I would love to hear more, like for those that didn't get to see it, what was it about? Like deep, deep dive into that for us. Yeah, sure. So um, this was really about simply getting people to care about housing. So when you look at the research, basically people care about the economy, they care about health, they care about topics 
like immigration and they rank all of those above housing. And it's kind of interesting because I think housing relates to all of the most important mm -hmm. topics. You know, if you don't have a house, then you're not going to be able to have good health either. These things are linked, but people just don't rank it highly enough. So we really wanted to elevate that and get people talking about it. So the objective was to do that by linking it to um, what was going on culturally, which at the time and still now was the cost of living crisis. It's yeah. what everyone was talking about. Um, and we decided to do this in quite a, a different way that was quite lighthearted, which yeah. we can, I can chat about if you want. Yeah, I'd like we did that. it. Yeah, so um, we basically decided to poke some fun at all the people that tell you, they give you tips for how your life could be better. Like, why don't you just, you know, eat less avocado or work a few more hours, get a better paying job cancel your Netflix and everything will be fine. And we really wanted to sort of poke fun at that whilst at the same time offering a real solution, which is that we expect the government to actually help out with the fact that people can't afford their housing. Um, so that's what we did and it, it worked really well, yeah. And Helen's here because I basically keep dragging her to every single event to talk about <laughs> what we did with her. Like, Just follow me. And <laughs> but no, it's good. I think for me, the, the interesting thing off the back of that campaign was how engaged our team were. Not that they don't always get engaged with client work, but it was actually, sometimes they get really passionate about something. Um, and it was so interesting, because I normally do this, but I talk to Helen, like, oh, look, come talk to the team. And then I just kind of just like walk away and just let the team handle stuff, because they're better at things than I am. But um, the interesting thing was to see is when I kept deep jumping back in and being, oh, how's it going? Everyone's like, oh my God, this is happening. And they said this, and this community member said that. I was like, okay, put me down. <laughs> um, but it was exciting to see their passion about it. And then once the campaign going out, went, came out, sorry, it was interesting also to see everyone else also um, equally as excited. It's interesting you say that because I think that was one of the first parts where we picked it up internally. Obviously, you've always got an idea, like we think we've done something good here. Um, and then obviously we worked with Jay's team and the platform at Imagine Insights to get, well, the specific thing for us was to get uh, insights from people with lived experience. So that's what we were working together on. And um, I think when we first saw the feedback and it was just so positive, you told me that you do brutally honest insights. So I was expecting it to be a bit more, you know, <laughs> negative. Um, and it, we had such a strong reaction that I knew early on that we were onto something quite special. Yeah. And it was, it was nice for us to see that because sometimes I panic because I, I don't want to go back to a client and be like, hey, it's terrible. <laughs> just like, just don't run it. Which we've had in the past. We've had clients come to us and like, hey, this is a campaign. And even when they send it over to me and I watch the campaign, I'm like, ah, okay, cool, interesting. Um, and then we send it out to the community and it just gets trashed. And they just come back in the community like, like globally, they're like, yo, you can't do this, you can't put this out. Um, but it was nice because in that yeah. situation, I didn't have to have that conversation. But I think that is an important part of feedback too. And sure. we tested two routes for this. And what we learned from your community was that they preferred this route because the other route was much more, it was um, focused on like quotes about people's uh, experiences and the feedback from people with lived experience was, this is too depressing, it's too negative, we don't want to hear about our situation, we know what it is already, we're much more inspired by the thing that has is solution focused, yeah. um, which was another reason to back the route that we went down in the end. Okay. All right, my second to last question, you'll be happy to know, we're nearly there, it's all right, we're all good. Um, so, with campaign success, normally when we're looking at it, there's like, there's like loads of elements to it, but you and um, Sinead had put this, put this idea together, like the three C's, um, having context, building conclusions, and having great creative. What do you see as the most important out of those, and then how do these play out in, um, in that, for your specific campaign? Yeah, so I mean, I wouldn't pick one as most important because you, okay. you, you can't obviously do a campaign without all three of those things. Uh, so context, obviously that is incredibly important. Context um, in this sense was A, the fact that we were tapping into what was culturally relevant and making a distinct choice, which was we can either be absorbed by the cost of living crisis or we can find a way in where we are relevant to it and become part of that conversation. Context was also important for us in terms of what we just talked about, making sure that we really wanted to have a panel of people from a diverse range of backgrounds because we know statistically you're more um, likely to be impacted by the housing emergency from certain backgrounds. So that was really important who had lived experience mm -hmm. of these issues. Um, so really important to set the scene, find out what they're saying, what their views are on the creative, working together on it. 
Um, and then creative itself, we do that all in-house. I'm so proud of the fact that we have mm. an in-house creative studio, which is as good as any creative agency producing work like this. I think it's a huge asset to us. And then the other one, context. Yeah. Con context. Oh, conclusion. I was about to yeah. say, don't look at me. I'm yeah, just, yeah. Uh, so conclusion. I'm just reading the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I panicked and I didn't know what I was like, hi. <laughs> so, <laughs> just ran out the door. <laughs> Conclusions is a pretty big deal. Obviously, we need to prove this stuff works. Yes. And, um, you know, we were measuring things like uh, buzz. We wanted to know, are people talking about shelter? Is it positive or negative? Belief in cause. Do they believe in us more as a result? Mm. Do they believe in housing more as a result? And engagement, how far are they spreading this message? So they were some of the core metrics. And then also we measured a lot of other things where we got some unexpected successes. For example, it wasn't a fundraising campaign, mm. but our donations increased by 41% oh, in, wow. the, in the campaign period. So things like that uh, are super important. Yeah, it's sure. not just the, the metrics that you planned, but also have a look and see whether any unexpected successes, and there were quite a few of those as well. Yeah, and that's, I think the, the interesting thing for me is, is that the, the level, because I've, I've worked with charities in the past before in the US, and the level of passion from yourselves and the team over at Shelter is just, it just blows my mind. I'm like, there's no way you guys are really this excited about it. Like, come on, <laughs> let's all just chill out. But it's actually, every time I speak to them, you guys are so passionate, especially when I speak with yourself, is you're so passionate about what you're doing and the, and the change that you are making. Okay, we're gonna land this plane. Um, we've spoken about everything that's been happening at Shelter, all the things you've done, all the campaigns, and obviously you're gonna work with us in the future, thanks, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, what is coming up for Shelter? What are you excited about? What are the things you're thinking, okay, this is the next, this is the next decade as I continue to take over? What yeah, uh, loads and loads of stuff. Super excited. I mean, just the year ahead, we've got a lot. I mean, in the next few weeks, we've got something coming out, which again is taking on a serious issue in quite a humorous way to get people engaged. It is relating to renting and discrimination. Um, we have got, so shelter strategy, we really believe that the way to end homelessness is to have more social housing and really good quality social homes and we need the country and people to understand that. So we've got a big piece of work which we're working with your team on um, <laughs> around that. And then the other major, major thing is that in the next year we're going to have a general election at some unknown point. So we have to plan for the unknown and we are planning for that. And that is an opportunity for us to make sure that whoever the government is, mm. they have put in their party manifesto that they're committed to housing as an issue and then right. we can hold them to account whoever's elected. So lots of big opportunities for us ahead and yeah, it's a really exciting time. I think I think the good thing is is that the it's definitely a lot more in the conversation you guys are playing a massive part of that, making sure that that the housing crisis and all these situations, all these things are just very much, not just going into the conversation, but staying in the conversation. Because I remember when um, when Black Lives Matter happened and I did the, the amount of diversity talks I did over that period of time was wild. And then it kind of just seeped away and then suddenly I wasn't black anymore. Um, and that was interesting to me just to watch that change. And I think the good thing for you guys and what you're able to do, your marketing team is, is, is small but mighty. And I watched the way you're able to keep it in the conversation. That's something that I'm really passionate about. When something, when a cause goes into the conversation, we need to keep it there. And I think that's really, really great. Side note, I met the prime minister yesterday, whatever, it's a small Did brand. You? But um, <laughs> I was, we were, there was an event being hosted by the great British entrepreneurs and they invited us to, I actually, did, so funny story, whatever. So, <laughs> so I get an email out of the blue and it's like, you've been invited to number 10 to come to, to come to Downing Street. I'm like, cool, so this is spam. Went to delete the email. And then somebody followed up with me and like, hey, don't delete that email because it's just gone out. You're coming to number 10. I'm like, wonderful. So I came to number 10 yesterday. Literally still had no idea why I was going. So I turned up to number 10 thinking like, maybe they're just going to night me, whatever. So <laughs> I get there. We have this whole event. And then I meet the prime minister and he's tiny. Like literally, he's like literally the smallest. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh, you're so small. <laughs> but, he was, but he was so lovely and it was great. Whatever, like vote whatever you want to vote. But he was small and he was nice. But, um, Is this a campaign to keep the conservatives <laughs> in? <laughs> Not saying we should um, vote however you want to vote. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was good. So <laughs> um, Helen, really appreciate it for your time. Thank I know you so we have much. Time for some questions, maybe. Um, Kat, I don't know. Um, do I have time for questions? Forty seconds of questions. Yes. If there are any. Yeah, you've got. Yeah, you've got like three minutes. 
Oh, oh excellent. excellent. This is why I like Kat. She's the best. Um, are, are there any questions? This is the moment when there's no questions. How Great. small? How small? <laughs> Five foot seven. I know, tiny. Literally, my son was taking a mic out of me because he thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Really enjoyed it. So glad we stayed. Oh, thank you. Um, so I have a question because you refer a lot to using humor with um, Gen Z. So I'm mm. just wondering, in terms of, is this the is do you see humor as a sort of trend? Because there, there's so much seriousness going on in the world right now, and I think maybe some of the older generations, myself included, maybe feel the pressure a little bit more. But I'm I'm just interested because humor has, seems to be a very consistent thread in everything that you're talking about and, and what you sort of see that um, in the future and for Gen Z. Is that for me or you? Um, I'll let you go first because you did it and then I'll go off. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I was really interested in the last talk. Uh, someone said that uh, people are saying that they don't want humor, but mm. that's not what we're seeing. We think it's engaging. It's a really interesting balance to get right when we work with such serious topics, but the humor that we use is often poking fun at the ridiculousness of a situation. And it's a really good way of um, sparking that sort of engagement when it's kind of bringing everyone together against how ridiculous a, a problem it is and sort of making them really want to take action in a way that's really different to other charities. Humour isn't typically something that charities mm. tend to do. So for charity's perspective, absolutely. But I'm sure you have more Gen Z yeah, specific so context. We have 33,000 Gen Z in 111 countries around the world. Um, and the interesting thing that we see, there is a lot of common threads, but definitely humour is one of them, how they want to engage with the brand. An interesting thing when we speak to our community is that their favourite way of a brand engaging with them is actually the brand poking fun at themselves. And not necessarily, not necessarily obviously in, in, in Helen's context is slightly different, but poking fun at themselves and um, actually um, that self-deprecating humor, they find it great and they say, actually, you, you're taking yourselves not so seriously. Because I think historically with brands, we kind of, social media was aware of us inviting people to our party at our house and then we get a megaphone, lock the door and then scream at you at the party. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, that's how we use social media as a brand historically. But now it's starting to change with brands like Duolingo and Ryanair being like, hey, we know that we're probably the cheapest, potentially the worst airline, but this, 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 and this. And I think that, that type of self-deprecating humor does really, really well this demographic. When you say engagement, do you mean, like, is that measurable? Like, are you looking at the data of, like, that engagement? Yeah. Yeah, for sure, without a doubt. So from a qualitative and quantitative perspective, we, we, we do both, which is great. Thank you so much. I think we've run over time. Have I run over time? Yeah. That's all right, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you for taking the time out to listen and speak to you soon. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you, Jay and Helen.